Good evening and welcome to the uh, Tuesday, March 16th, Policy Subcommittee of the Brockton uh, School Committee. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the Open Meeting Law's requirement that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube, and Comcast Channel 98. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com dot com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right, let me call the roll somewhere I have. There we go. All right, I'll call the roll to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. D'Agostino is here. Miss Asac. Here. All right, we know Mrs. Mendez is unable to join us tonight. Uh, Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. There he is. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we are a quorum. All right. So um, the agenda for our policy subcommittee meeting, two items, uh, the DESE, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Guidance on In-Person Learning and Student Learning Time Requirements. And uh, Superintendent Thomas, I assume you'll be uh, leading the discussion on this one. Yes, thank you. Um, first, I just want to give you an update um, about how we started with hybrid. Uh, I just want to thank um, our teachers and our staff so far for um, the work they've done welcoming students back. Uh, today was the last day of the phase in with um, with our 11th and 12th graders here at Brockton High School um, and at the Key Center in the Huntington they've had um, their 11th and 12th graders in already because you know this they're in a smaller setting but I just want to thank all the teachers the administrators the support staff um, the custodians the food service work is the administrative assistance again obviously our nurses for everything they've all done um, to make these days possible and as we move towards um, beefing up students coming back into school um, the job that they've done to prepare uh, has been great I really appreciate all of their hard work so um, going forward as you know the Department of Education delivered new guidance last week and um, and the Board of Education, the Board of um, Elementary and Secondary Education voted on Friday the 5th to give the com uh, Commissioner Riley the authority to determine um, when hybrid and remote models can no longer count towards student learning time hours. So, so what happened was the Commissioner then put out a notice to all schools, districts, that um, students we need to return in full in person. Uh, and he gave dates for elementary and for middle schools. So for elementary schools, which here is K through five, he gave the start date for 100% in person on April 5th, and for middle schools beginning on April 28th. And high school um, return to full, that guidance will not come out until the beginning of, of April. And then I'll, this also presentation will be during the full school committee meeting. We'll share the screen and I'll also do it then so you know everybody's on you know can hear what I'm saying and what our proposed plan is so the Department of Ed also announced last Wednesday it had a the, the Commissioner had a meeting with all superintendents and he announced there is a waiver process especially for schools who have been uh, fully remote for most of the year so that waiver process for elementary schools um, needs to be submitted um, by Monday March 22nd and for middle schools uh, by Monday, April 12th. So again, they're very limited on who could get waivers. Um, he said it's going to be tough. It would have to be approved by the school committee if you're putting a waiver. Well, it doesn't have to be, but he recommends it, and we always do it that way here. 
um, that we would need to have a waiver um, approved by the school committee. The districts and school will receive, once we put the waiver in, on or before March 22nd, that we would get a response within five business days. So that is the new regulations from the Department of Education for in-person, full in-person learning in grades pre-K to grade eight. So I don't know if anybody has any questions about that before I move on. Mr. Manichella. Superintendent Thomas, um, what has the reception been basically with, you know, the uh, additional students by, you know, both teachers and, uh, and, and personnel, support personnel? Um, from my, the response from the staff here, it's yeah. been great. I mean, they have really, um, as I've walked around the buildings, and I think I've been to most all of them now. Uh, maybe I think I have three or four left that I have to visit. Um, but the teachers have been great as you watch them teach and students in front of them and also continue to teach students at home. Um, you know, they're thrilled to see the students back. And, um, you know, and then also with the, the help of the mayor's office and the neighborhood health center, now that all our, our school staff who wanted to be vaccinated have that opportunity and second, the second vaccine shots will be given out um, to all those who got it at the, the Shaw Center um, the week of April 5th will be the second shot. And by the end of that week, anybody that were vaccinated during the three days provided to the Brockton Public Schools, which was last Friday, um, yesterday and today, the second vaccines will be the first week of April. So. You know, it's positive. It, the Department of Ed doesn't say that teachers need to be vaccinated or staff need to be vaccinated for coming back in full person, but, you know, I, I think it's a great thing that we were able to do that for our staff. Yeah. And could you also just describe for the public in, in all the different levels, you know, the, the distancing procedures in, in, within the schools and, uh, you know, the cleaning that's going on and those types of uh, safety protocols and measures? Sure. So um, right now we have um, custodians that disinfect throughout the day. Um, they use spray bottles with the disinfectant that you know, obviously kills COVID-19 and the flu, the flu virus. We also have um, spray. Uh, every building has um, at least four disinfectant spray guns that, that spray large areas. Uh, the, I think the high school here has up to 20. So we're disinfecting throughout the day. Um, People say they close buildings or they go remote for a day to deep clean. That means if, you know, I, I've never bought into that. You actually have to deep clean every day and every night. And that's what happens with our um, custodians now. That's the facilities department doing that. And also we have, and Aldo can, can attest to this, um, hundreds of thousands of disinfectant wipes, packages. Every classroom has at least 12 to 15 to 20 of these canisters or uh, their package and students disinfect their own desks uh, at, the, at the beginning, at the end of each class. Um, when they're eating in the cafeteria, they do the same thing in the calf. Right now, um, we're at six feet of social distancing in the classrooms. In the cafeterias, we have to be at six feet because when they, uh, obviously when they uh, eat and take their masks off, they have to be at six feet. The new guidelines, and I'll go over that in the presentation, the new guidelines is you cannot use six feet as um, a reason. You can't stick to six feet and say you can't come back full because we're sticking to six feet. We have to move to three feet, and that's edge of chair to edge of chair. That's how we measure. Um, and, but at cafe in the cafeterias, you have to stay at six feet. So that's where we're gonna have to be very creative of how we use space, especially when students are eating lunch. And, and traveling through the hallways, like, you know, in the high school. and So the high school has done one way. I, I've been asked by yeah. past, a lot of places, a past, lot of, past students of some <laughs> friends of ours, how do you do it in the core? Yeah. Well, it's been, that's why it's been important that it, Brockton High has started at the 25%, because like today, there were 600 kids present in the building, and um, with now the 11th and 12th grade. And I know... You know, it's only one day a week, and we're progressing, but it really has helped, especially in a school this size. And not only this size, a school this size, you're talking about the Davis that has 1,100 students, the Baker, the George, who have over 800 students. It has really helped the teachers and the staff get the students used to passing through the hallways, mass breaks, using the boys' and girls' rooms, um, 
and basically just um, going outside, passing to the cafeteria, eating in the calf, staying six feet apart. So um, those are the those of the things that have gone well because we've start we've started small. Uh, in the high school, they've Dr. Murray has one way signs and um, there's stairwells that go down and some go up. So the students have done a good job. Let me, I have to commend the students. They all every, every student has come back. Um, they wear their masks. They follow directions because they love being back in school, and it's been a great it's been great to see. And and uh, many parents would always comment previously to this COVID nineteen crisis about in some bathrooms the lack of paper towels, the lack of soap. I assume we still now have a fully stocked uh, supply of soap towels to make sure that all the kids and staff have. Uh, no excuse for not washing no. and cleaning their hands after whatever, you know. Basically, you know, the more hand washing and cleaning, you know, simple, the simple things in life keep us all safe. And, you know, so that's not an issue, correct? No, absolutely not. We not only um, plenty of soap, water, paper towels, we also have hand dryers. And then every classroom has been, uh, it's been installed. The hand sanitizer stations, uh, not only that, the, they're, in, they're installed, as you can see, there's, I think, three or four of them in here. Um, every cafeteria has several hand sanitizer stations. Every gymnasium has them. The hallways have them. Um, and then we also have, obviously, the sanitation wipes, and we have um, the plenty of bottles of hand sanitizer as backups in all the schools. Great. Anything else? All right. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's a point that I think is worth mentioning. Um, you know, we know everybody wants the kids back in, you know, in five days right away. And I'm, I'm right there with you. I've gotten emails from constituents relaying that, you know, but I think the benefit to the phase in approach that we're doing is, OK, we've got we'll just use the high school, for example. Now we, we're up to 600 kids. OK, then we'll do the next phase, we'll bring more kids in, right? Do is what we're doing still working or do we have to make adjustments when we get more kids in? You know, so there's some benefit to the slow approach versus just tomorrow they're all back and let's hope what we're doing now with 600 kids continues to work with 4,000 kids. Um, so I think it makes sense, you know, this, again, we'll bring more back, okay? So these protocols still working or do we need to make adjustments, you know, and so on until we get everybody back. But that's certainly the... The goal and and to the parents that have reached out to i know not just me but other members of the committee we hear you and are we want them back in too as soon as possible we just want to make sure we do it in a way that everybody's safe that's all um anyway i didn't mean to interrupt you no no problem Keep going. all right so basically this is the proposed plan that we've discussed with the executive team um i've discussed with um, kim gibson uh, and also our principals and associate principals um, basically, we would um, look to submit a waiver, but that would only be to, to delay things for two weeks. Um, but we would move more students. In the meantime, we would move more students in. So my recommendation would basically be, um, and the reason for the additional time is we are ordering now several large tents because the only, and again, we're ready. We're ready to open, but... Um, we do need to set up tents outside so we can have, because otherwise we'll be feeding students from 8 o'clock in the morning until they leave. Because uh, obviously you have to have students six feet apart in the cafeterias. Our cafeterias are not large enough to obviously put all students in and have them eat six feet apart. That would, again, we'd be running lunches all day. So uh, we'd go to three feet in the classrooms, and, and um, we'll be very creative, and there'll be other areas that may have to be used as classrooms. But uh, Dr. Cobbs and uh, Ken Thompson are working with the principals. Um, we're going to put very large tents, and we were ahead of the game because, remember, this, this was all announced a week ago. So um, that, you know, about 100% for K to 8. So right away, we started talking to the tent companies. Um, they are going to have enough tents, very large. So we're measuring. We'll either have. 30, 40 by 50, 60 feet tents outside of the cafeteria set up so students can eat, you know, um, they can eat inside and outside. So we're not serving lunches all day and students are out of class. And so the lunches, and it's, that's the biggest challenge for all school districts, even small schools, 
because because you have to maintain the six feet, we need to open up more space for lunches, and that's why um, we'll need extra time. We also need extra time because we'll be going from 35 buses, which we are currently running, um, for when we do full in person for pre-K to eight, we need to go back. We need to go back to 52 buses, and it's going to take time for our transportation providers to to get more drivers back. There is a shortage in drivers, um, and we are working closely with our transportation companies to get, you know, hire more drivers, get them trained, bring some of them back that have been driving for other districts, and get up to the 52 buses that we're going to need to do the full in person. So again, I'd only see that as a two-week delay. So, um, however, we know the importance of getting students back. So we would transition to um, the 50% capacity pre-K to um, 12th grade uh, on April 5th. And on April 5th, as you know, right now we're doing half days and the second half of the day of PD for teachers. On April 5th, that Monday, uh, Mondays will now become an in-school day. So, and I'll go over how those cohorts would work. Um, and then that means the district, we would transition to full in person the Monday after April vacation, which would be April 26th. And again, that would be only asking the state for a two week delay. Again, the high school, we do not have guidance on. We have to wait to see what the guidance is on the high school. And obviously, this high school being the largest in the state and on the East Coast, we'll have to have very particular plans. But the Keith Center, um, the Edison Academy and the Huntington, um, they can go by a different schedule because, again, they have left students, they have a little bit more space. Um, and so high school, again, will be at a, um, another date. But I also want to add that the uh, sub-separate students, uh, students with disabilities, the first students that returned, and they've returned on the, um, the hybrid model. Uh, they've been in 50% on April 5th all of those students would return to five days. The Huntington, who have, they have been four days in person, on the fifth, they will change to five days in person. And then again, all sub-separate classrooms who started on, they, um, will, they were the first group that started for us, they will move to five days on April 5th. Excellent. Um, and so, any questions on that before I move on? Go ahead, um, Mr. Argusino. If I may ask, I have two Two questions. Um, the first one, you mentioned busing. And so how, what's the, are we still gonna be, and did Desi give any new guidance when they updated all this guidance on busing and distancing and all of that? Yeah, so now Desi will allow um, to, uh, two students in each seat. Um, they have to wear masks right. and you have, they have to have the windows open. So that's the new guidance. It used to be one student per seat. Um, they've changed that to um, two students per seat, and that's why, you know, we need additional buses. Um, right now we're running 35 because we're 25% of the students are coming to school, so we could go with only the 35 buses. And some buses you see with very few students on them. It's just, just, just how it works. Um, but right now when we move to the 100%, we will need – the 50% will be fine with the current level of buses that we have when we move to 50% if approved on the April 5th, um, but we would then need the full 52 buses when we move to the full in person because, again, you can only have two to a seat. Some of our buses used to be crowded where there'd be three mm -hmm. to a seat, especially with the elementary level, but obviously we cannot do that. So it's important that we have that extra time to call, get, bring, have them bring the drivers back, have those buses ready to go for the Monday after the April vacation. Okay. And uh, one additional question. I know that when we first started to reopen schools, um, some parents um, decided to keep their, their student, their kids remote still. Um, and yep. I was I'll, just I curious, have that in here too. Yep. you know, uh, so far, what's the, you know, percentage if, or however you have it, but also are we seeing from that first wave that came back with special ed and then K and pre-K, um, that that we're start are we starting to see more parents starting to choose in person now that it's starting to roll out? Yeah, so um, more parents have said they're going to send you know their children in once they have seen you know it's been safe. Um, they wanted to see how it worked. They wanted to talk to their friends who were sending their their children to school. So we have 
had more students. Right now, we're, to, we're still at about 1,800. I think it's down maybe a couple hundred to 1,600, that uh, full remote. Um, however, we have, to, we have to do another survey. That's a requirement of, of the Department of Education. You know, that number could go up because right. now that you're going full in person, people may feel, some people are really excited to come, have their children come back five days. Some may not be. Um, and be you know worried and nervous about it, so we could see more families uh, deciding to have their children go full remote, and we do have to still provide them with that opportunity. Perfect. So Desi's guidance still allows Absolutely. per parent selection, correct remote opportunity. Yep. Great. All right. Thank you. No problem. So uh, talking about the cohorts on Monday, um, April. Me. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Just to clarify, that, that was my next question. Um, so I just want to clarify for parents out there and, and for myself. So the, the state basically, Desi is saying, if, if we are not giving the waiver that they want, you know, our kids in school um, beginning April 28th, basically, for the middle schools and April 5th for the elementary. But yet you can, the, a parent can still opt to have their child remote. That, that's the dichotomy here. So could you just elaborate on that? Yeah. So, so you can still have your kid out remote learning and the time will count for the child but not for the school system if the schools correct so could you, yeah could you so that, Mr. that's what a lot of superintendents did question um basically that you know parents still have the option if they don't feel comfortable sending their children to school then they could pick for the full remote uh and then we have to uh, provide the education um but all the kid but will be credited so so that time will be Credited, credited to yep. their graduation. But it will be not what um, you could put, you could put students, which we will not do on like an edgenuity program or a, a learning a management system where they wouldn't see a teacher. Um, we don't want to do that. Um, you know, there could be less live time with the teacher because now teachers will have full students in front of them. So that's a Teaching right now with 25%, even with 50%, is difficult to do that in person. And for students at home, when you have a full class in front of you and you have students at home, people that decide to keep their um, children remotely, and again, we're not looking to do this. A lot of school systems are sending them to edgenuity uh, online programs where they, they get a virtual teacher that's taped and it's not a, a teacher. Um, that's what the department actually is telling you that's, you know, if that's how you can manage it, you should do it that way. But I don't think our families or students deserve that. So we are still going to do our best to provide them with, you know, with the instruction from the teachers they've been used to all year. But that's not any, it's not an easy task. Uh, but the department, that's their regulation and that's what they want to continue. But you're right. The students that stay at home and have the option to stay fully remote, um, those hours count. Okay, I mean, because I'm sure all of us are going to get that question from some of our constituents. You know, okay, you know yep. can my child graduate on time, and is this count going to count? Yep. Like, you know, okay. Yeah, that will all count. Well, yeah, great. Absolutely. Thank you. I mean, that's, that's good to know. Yep. <laughs> and so um, moving forward, just so, um, so for the two weeks before the vacation, the Monday, April 5th, um, so what will happen is Orange 1, right now we have four cohorts because of the 25%. Now, um, Orange 1, Orange 2 will become one cohort, and that will be the Orange group. Green 1 and Green 2 cohorts will combine to be the Green group. So what will happen is um, Orange will remain on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, but that first Monday, April 5th, they'll have three days in. So they'll come on that Monday, and they'll come on Tuesday and Thursday. The following Monday, which is, um, which is the 12th of, of um, April, Green 1 and Green 2, they'll stay on Wednesdays and Fridays, and, but that f April 12th, Green Group will get three days in. So that's how it will, will be for pre-K to in the eighth grade. For those two weeks, and again, the proposal would all of those grades would start full time um, on April 26th. So the cohorts, you know, they there be no more cohorts for them, and that will continue though for the for the high school. Um, they'll continue in, until we get some more guidance that they, they will do 
one week a cohort will get three days, and next week they'll get two days, then three days, then two days, and then we'll wait to see what the guidance is for the high school. But again, you know, with 4,000 students at the high school, it's going to be, you know, we'll see what the, the Department of Ed comes out with high school guidance. So like Mr. Minichello said, this section, remote learning will remain an option for families. We will do another survey that will go out either tomorrow night or Thursday morning. Um, I apologize, parents, for sending out another survey, but it's a requirement. Um, and we just want to make some things clear. Aside from, again, um, aside from Brockton High School students, and we are working with the Key Center, um, that could be a possibility as well. Um, beside them, when we get to April 26, the hybrid, in remote, the hybrid learning model will no longer exist for pre-K to eighth grade. So pre-K to eighth grade, you either have to choose in person, full time, five days a week, as of Monday, April 26th, or you pick full remote. It's, there's no more hybrid. It's just you can't, it's just, there's no option for hybrid anymore. And if a family picks full remote and then wants to switch to full in person, they have to allow us up to four weeks to make that change. The Department of Ed is saying six weeks, which pretty much is the end of the school year. We're saying up to four weeks. Hopefully it will be shorter, but there's a lot that has to happen if families decide to switch from remote to in person. It's the class size. It's, you know, we may have to change this. The, if the child's class, we might have to change bus routes depending on how many children that is so we do I'm saying hopefully we can move to a two-week wait time so this is for if somebody starts in person 100% five days and a child then the parent wants to say you know what it's not working out I want them full remote that can happen immediately if you start full remote then want to come in person it's going to take us some time to plan that out so again the, the department says six weeks I'm going to say up to four but hopefully we can cut that down to about two um, but it's going to be very disruptive. We, we really, and the department has made this clear, we can't have people switching back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You ha really have to pick one. And then again, there are circumstances. Somebody in the family gets sick or something happens, as we always make accommodations for what's best for families, but we really have to try to maintain uh, a schedule so we can know where the class size is, make sure we're running buses, and it's all about safety. So if you, are full, if you choose full remote and then you want to come in person, we will try to cut the, down, the time down to a couple weeks to have you transition to full in person, but it, there has to be some lead time so we can work out class size, bus routes, and those things. So again, so when we go to full in person, um, April 26th for pre-K to 8, there'll be no more hybrid learning model. So a parent would have to choose full in person or fully remote. And obviously for the high school, again, this right now brought in high, I'm working with the Keith, the Huntington will already be five days. Um, and so the, that the hybrid model and the full remote model will still be an option for high school students. Because again, we do not have guidance on high, we do not have guidance on where we're going with the high school yet. Um, so, but we will move again to the 50% for high school on April 5th. And then every other week they'll get that third day and then hopefully the guidance from the state comes out, they said it's coming out early in April. Any questions on that one? Again, distancing, um, Mr. Minicello asked this, um, we are required to move to three feet in the classrooms, um, but lunch re has to remain at six feet. Um, buses would move to, again, two students per seat, and the windows have to stay open. And um, you know that's pretty much for transportation. And then, again, the department wanted us to share this, the three feet versus the six. They did put out, there's a graph here um, that the data that they have studied since September shows that there's really not a substantial difference in cases among students who 
that were three feet apart or six feet apart when it comes to learning. So the cases have been pretty much the same, uh, whether they've been six feet apart or three feet apart. That's in the classrooms. That's not like, everything has been six feet for cafeterias. Or when there's mass breaks, students have to be six feet apart as well. So um, I'll not, take any questions. And well, not being a medical expert, I just think that the difference is simple. If you're respecting the rules with regard to masks, and you know you're cleaning your areas, there isn't the problem. You go to three feet and don't respect the rules for masks, then there will be a problem. Yep. You know, go to have six feet and don't respect the rules for masks. I still say there may be a problem. You know, so it's all about the cleanliness and, and, yep. and following the rules with the masks until this issue is beyond all. You know, it, it's in the past. You know, so. You know, it's all about following the mask rules and the protocols and the cleaning, and everyone will hopefully remain safe. And, and, and the reason there's the no high school... show it. You're the right. numbers show it. So, there's reason yeah. there's no high school guidance yet because they are still conferring with the, the, the doctors because, again, older students um, compared to the younger students in elementary and middle school, older students do, you know, they do pass the virus um, more often than your younger students. That's why they're right. waiting until April. They are still talking with uh, doctors, their experts with the state, uh, the Mass Department of Public Health to put out the guidance for high school. Makes sense. Okay. Any other questions from members of the committee? I just have a comment. Mrs. Sullivan, please. <clears throat> but on the um, high school students, is, is they, they would be having the masks on. Oh, absolutely. So, Everybody has to wear the mask. So yep. I don't think it would be transmitted as quick yep, exactly. because of the mask. Because when they're out with their friends, of course, they don't have the masks on, so yeah. it's transmitted quicker. But in school, with the, you know, the wipes and the masks, you know, the nurses can filter that out pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, just pretty I mean, that's, quick. And that's the only, re the only reason I say that is because that's the, why the state hasn't put guidance out yet for high school is right. because they, they, they want more information from the medical experts that they've been working with throughout the year. Right. No, that makes sense. I mean, we've yep. been doing it the same way, right? Had the doctor here giving us the medical guidance, I think. All right. Any other questions or comments on this, on this agenda item? Um, and the I, only thing I want to say is, again, I thank this committee. I think, you know, I, and again, no one wants students in school more than us. Right. Um, I just think it's been done in a, such a safe way. And I think this is the safest way for us to move to 100% um, is to go to 50% um, on the 5th and then move to 100% pre-K uh, to 8 on, you know, the, the Monday after vacation. And it also, and again, this is not a requirement from the Department of Ed. Uh, they, they said that, you know, teachers do not have to be vaccinated. You know, we went the other route. We believe that we felt strongly about them being vaccinated. And they have all, not only teachers, school staff, all school staff, right. Uh, had the option and still have the option to uh, use the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. They had three days dedicated just for us. Um, they're also now working with uh, bus companies to vaccinate all bus drivers who also fall into this phase. So when we return in full um, on the um, 26th, uh, everybody would have had that who wanted it would have their second shot if you followed the three days for um for the, the, the clinic that was set up at the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. So, again, that helps us be more safe as well. Right. Even though, again, I want to make it clear, because the department does not want to use vaccinations as whether you should come back full. Or, um, but it does, it just makes parents feel and our staff feel that, you know, it's, a, it's safe. You know, right. it's, more, it's more safe. Right. Between all the cleanings and the masks and the vaccinations being an opportunity for them, you know, I mean, I don't think there's much else we could do to make coming back safer. Plus all the air pure, the, the, the 1.2 million in air the, I mean, you know, we really have <laughs> pulled out all the stops on this. If there's something that could be done, we've, did, we've done it um, at this point. Uh, you know, I can't think of anything more or anything we didn't do that was a suggestion or from either, you know, uh, Dr. Herman or CDC. Or, I mean, I think we've... We've just implemented all of it. So, And also, uh, I think, you know, pushing to the 26th, it also, the weather's better. Yep. 
we can do th- more things outside, even though we'll get exactly. the tent. The tents will be there for rainy days. Right. Um, but, you know, phys ed classes could be outside. Art classes can go outside. Classes can go outside. Um, windows can be open more without worrying about being so cold. The buses, now that they're going to be full with two students per seat, windows have to be down. You know, kids, you know, there will be some chilly days, but you're not going to see what we saw the last couple of days, you know, 10 to 15 degrees, uh, right. you know, when we were in late April. So, you know, that's another benefit of just delaying it two weeks to go towards, um, you know, we're not going to, that can't be in the waiver, right? right? We want warm weather to come, but, you know, it is one of the benefits. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, after the past year of being cooped up inside of just, and, and away from each other a lot more than we normally would have been in the warm weather last year and this winter. Um, I, you know, we could all probably use more, more time outside at this point. So, um, all right. Um, you don't need a vote. I need a motion you to do. approve, okay. uh, send to the full school committee all right. to go by the plan with the 50% on April 5th. Well, first, it would be 100% for our sub-separate classrooms, our students with disabilities, who came back at 50% that first week, they would go to 100%, um, meaning five, and they would go to five days uh, on April 5th, and that includes the students at the Huntington. They've been, they've been, um, they've been full in four days a week. Um, they'll be full in five days a week as well on the 5th. All other students would go to 50%. We would eliminate the half-day Monday um, where the teachers had the PD, even though they were great with the PD, they did a great job, but we were not able to submit a waiver and keep that as a half-day remote day. Um, so then the cohorts, all cohorts would then go to, the other cohorts would go to 50% on April 5th uh, and using that Monday as a rotating day. So, you know, every other week, uh, the cohort and the 50% would get the three days in. Right. Right. So you basically need somebody, you need a motion in the form of basically uh, for April 5th for a 100 percent return for substantially separate classes and the Huntington would be five days at the Huntington. I, I, you don't, I don't think you'd have to put that in the motion okay. for the Huntington. All right. So we can leave that out. All right. So 100 percent on April 5th for substantially separate classes, 50 percent on April 5th, K to 8, and 100 percent K to 8 on April 28th. 26th. 26th. Pre-K to 8. Oh, and I'm sorry, both both pre-K, I and missed that would, on the At April the end 5th. of the motion, you would say we approve the superintendent to put a waiver in to allow approve. moving the start date for elementary from the 5th to the, um, the 26th. So the full in-person would need, you would give me permission to put a waiver in, so weeks, full in-person for two weeks, full in-person for elementary, pre-K to 8, would move from April 5th to April 26th. We do not need a waiver for the middle school because their April 28th was their date, but we're going to start them full on the 26th. So we just need a K to 8. K to 5, pre-K to 5. Pre, Jesus, pre-K to We need a waiver for pre-K to 5. Pre-K to 5. I'll be all right. Correct. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to be a lengthy motion. I apologize. All right. So does anybody dare? <laughs> I mean, all right. Well, so we need a motion from somebody. What's that? Yeah. All right. Well, we, I'm going to go through them. So we need a motion um, for substantially separate classrooms to go back at 100% capacity April 5th. For full five days. Right. For a full five days. Also, a full five days at, uh, or no, at 50% capacity April 5th for pre-K to 8. No, that's pre-K to 12. That's Man. all great. I'll be all right. April 5th will be all grades. Okay. Let me start this again. I apologize. 100% substantially separate April 5th for five days. 50% pre-K to 12 on April 5th. Then pre-K to 8 at 100% capacity full five days for April 26th. Also approve the superintendent to request a two-week waiver for pre-K to five. To move their full in person from April 5th to April 26th. All right, so does anyone want to make that motion? 
Can't we just play that back? Pre K to five, yep. April 5th, which is the Department of Education's requirement to, to April 26th. 26th. It's actually, the reason why I was saying two weeks is because one of those weeks is the vacation. Right. The week of the 19th is school right. vacation. So that's why we're only saying we need two weeks. <laughs> we'll get this so, done. I will make a motion. A 15 minute motion. <laughs> yeah, motion to approve. Oh, sorry, motion to approve um, the superintendent, uh, superintendent's plan to bring back 100% of substantially separate students for five day in-person learning for, uh, for the date of April 5th, 2021. Second part of the motion to approve the superintendent's plan for pre-K through 12 at 50% um, to take effect April 5th, 2021 and then a second phase of the pre-k to eight to bring pre-k to eight back at 100 percent um, to take effect april 26 2021 then to approve the superintendent requesting a two-week waiver regarding the pre-k to five um, sh uh, to allow the date for the 100 percent return to be from april fifth to april 26 2021 okay we have a motion on the floor by mr minicello second we have a second by mrs sullivan is there any discussion on the motion i'm going to call the roll then mayor sullivan yes d'agostino is a yes ms asac yes mr minicello yes Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. I can't hear him, but. <laughs> Have him write it on a piece of paper. <laughs> Hold up a sign, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> okay. That was a yes. You, you All right, very good. <laughs> Motion carries unanimous. All right. Is there anything else under this item? I'd like to thank myself for making the motion and not getting any dates <laughs> thank wrong. You. Thank you. I want to thank wrong. you as thank well. Thank you very much. Thank you, very... Tom, for the 15-minute motion. <laughs> <laughs> we are accurate. You know, it's a good thing we had an attorney in the room because you need an attorney for that one. All right. Uh, is there anything under other business for this committee? I have one. All right. It's not long. Um, so it's the, like that motion. No, it will not be like this motion. <laughs> so the Department of Education, um, actually, this is a good thing. Um, they are allowing senior students um, to in in the high schools, and that's Brockton High School, that's the Key Center, that's the Huntington and Edison Academy. Um, they can allow students to go down to the elementary and middle schools um, to help with the staff as far as covering lunches, tutoring. They can do this during their school day. So um, our high school principals are now working uh, to see what students can fit that. And we also can pay them to do that. They're paid internships. Um, it's great because you know staffing can be a struggle. Um, and it would really help, especially with coverage at recess, lunches, but also just hopefully it will bring us some teachers as well, uh, students that you know, are interested in education, but also some students that, you know, want a job. Um, and that could start again after the April vacation. Um, so what I need from the committee is um, there is a policy um, that every employee has to be fingerprinted and quarried. Um, so I'm asking this committee, these are Brockton public school, high school students, and again, all of our high schools, that we would still quarry them, but we would waive the fingerprints. It, because it's it's fifty five dollars to, to get fingerprints, it's going to take a long time for the results to come back. And I'm confident if we can do quarries, obviously we and there are our own students who we know well. I would ask the committee to waive because our, our policy does say that every employee has to be fingerprinted and quarried. 
because these will be technically students slash employees because we will be able to pay them. I just thought, you know, I needed to ask the committee to waive the fingerprints for Brockton Public Schools seniors to be able to go and work with our elementary and middle school students for, again, tutoring, coverage, um, and working with the staff at those schools. And obviously we can assure parents, I assume, that we will be very selective as to which students are given this opportunity. Absolutely. And just to be clear, um, our quarry, the quarries that school systems get are the, the, the most you can get. Um, we have the full quarry access. Um, so everything from driving records to obviously any other criminal offenses, um, we get the top quarry information that you can possibly get. Um, and we would still do quarries. Fingerprints are done in case, obviously, um, usually for older um, staff because that gives you throughout the country. Um, Corey will still give you some things that are in the country if it's felon, felonies. Um, fingerprints give a lot more for older, um, for older employees, obviously, that we're trying to hire or if we hire them. Um, but a Corey, again, for the Brockton Public Schools, we have the, uh, the fullest access you can get to Corey. So we would definitely be selective and be students that would have to be students in good standing. Uh, they would have to be on par to graduate. Um, and again, hopefully these are some, uh, some of these students are students that are interested in going to college to teach and others that just want to mentor younger kids. So, okay. um, any questions from the members of the committee on that? All right, Mr. Sullivan, I want to make sure you don't get left out. Any questions? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Nope, not All right. Um, does anyone want to make a motion to waive the fingerprint requirement for Brockton High School seniors uh, to uh, basically intern at our, at our elementary schools? And, and middle schools. And middle schools. I apologize. I'm batting a thousand on these motions tonight. I'll make the motion. Mr. Rodriguez. I'll make the motion. I'll make a motion to waive the fingerprinting process for high school seniors for volunteering tutoring at the elementary level and the junior high schools. Okay. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Rodriguez, properly seconded by Ms. Asak. Um, any discussion on the motion? Mr. Minicello. that are going to be working with you know, younger students need to be very uh, thorough in knowing who these kids are because, um, you know, minors' records in, ju in juvenile court um, are sealed in many cases. So I, I just point that out as a caution. Right. And that's why I asked the superintendent would these students be properly yep, vetted be, and we would be very selective in who is given this opportunity. Yeah, so it would be um, Dr. Murray, Dr. Cobbs, um, Cindy Burns, and Jay Lana would, um, the principals at all our high schools, because this is available to all our high school students, would, again, vet those students um, at the high school. They would, you know, work with the deans. At our other high schools, they would work with their staff, again, to vet the students that are in good standing, uh, on par to graduate, um, and they would work, obviously, then would go to the schools, um, work directly with the administration at the schools, um, and then would obviously be partnered up with, with current Brockton Public School staff. They did work with our MTAs, our paras, our teachers. And we're still quarrying the, I think that's a good point. Absolutely. We're still going to do Absolutely. quarries. The, I'm not, the, wait, we're not waiving the quarry. Right, the no. full, we're just not fingerprinting, but no. we're doing the full quarry that the school system can do, which to your point is much more deep than. Much more. In, in some of our quarries, depending on the case, we do get juvenile information. Right, and I was going to say, which should knock out anybody with any criminal, uh, concerning criminal history. Correct. Right, okay. So. No, it's, also, a, it's a good point. I also, and they would be, of that. and they also would be partnered with somebody at the school. 
Um, so they'll be with a para, with an MTA, um, out at recess with, with teachers, right. with staff. They're not going to be. You know, they're, they're high school, so they're not going to be left alone, right. too. Exactly. Okay. Anything else? All right. I'm going to call the roll because we have a, a motion with a proper second. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Motion carries unanimous. All right. Is there any other other business for the policy subcommittee this evening? All right. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Sullivan, properly seconded by Ms. Asak. I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. Policy is adjourned. We'll be right back at it for a full committee shortly. Thank you.